Hi guys, so this uh, video is going to be looking at Home Filling Station by Elizabeth Bishop. Okay, so just to start off with, I want you to think about filling stations. So a petrol station might seem a strange subject for a poem. Um, you know, usually we see poems about nature, about you know, beautiful scenery, or about close relationships. So the idea of writing a poem about a petrol station might seem a bit strange. But what themes do you think Bishop might discuss when she was writing about a petrol station? Right there. And think about the last time you stopped at a small kind of countryside petrol station. Okay, so not one of these huge big ones you see off the motorways and stuff, but a small local kind of family petrol station. And what did you notice about the place there? Okay, so a quick think about those two questions before we move on. And so some of the themes you might have come up with in terms of a filling station you might think about industrialization possibly, okay, with all the cars and movement. Okay, you might think about journeys and travel. You know, you said when we first looked at Bishop, the travel is a big aspect of her um, writing. However, with Bishop, we're always looking for a sense maybe uh, family and home and things like that. So, thinking of a small countryside uh, petrol station or filling station, perhaps we're looking at how those aspects draw out to it as well. Alright, so let's get straight into the poem. So, filling station. Oh, but it is dirty, this little filling station. Oil soaked, oil permeated to a disturbing overall black translucency. Be careful with that match. Father wears a dirty, oil soaked mon monkey suit that cuts him under the arms, and several quick and saucy and greasy sons assist him. It is a family filling station, all quite thoroughly dirty. Do they live in the station? It has a cement porch behind the pumps, and on it a set of crushed and grease impregnated wickerwork on the wicker sofa, a dirty doll quite comfy. Some comic books provide the only note of colour, of certain colour. They lie upon a big dim doily draping a tabaret, part of the set, beside a big hirsute begonia. Why the extraneous plant? Why the tabaret? Why oh why the doily? Embroidered in daisy stitch with marguerites, I think, and heavy with grey crochet. Somebody embroidered the do doily. Somebody waters the plants, or oils it maybe. Somebody arranges the rows of cans so that they softly say S-O, so, 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 to high-strung automobiles. Somebody loves us all. Alright, so, think about this poem. The first things you want to think about is what is the most prominent feature of the appearance of the filling station? Okay, so you look at me at the first few stanzas here, what imagery really stands out? The actual idea does go the whole way through the poem, but what imagery really stands out? Think about colour perhaps. Okay. Why do you, sorry, why does um, Bishop think that a family might live here? Why does Bishop think that this is not just a business, that there's something another level to this? Okay, so I'm going to switch back to the poem now. I'm going to suggest pause here, read through the poem, Two or three times, you know, you want to have a very good understanding of the poem, a good familiarity with it before going into analysis, and think can you come up with answers to those two questions. Okay, so pause the, poem, the video here for a few minutes and think about read through the poem and think about those questions. Alright, so the image or the feature that would really want to stand out to most people is the oil. Okay, she keeps repeating oil, 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 the oil permeate, the oil soaked, okay? So this idea of dirtiness um, across the filling station very much just comes out to us. Now, not, this could be affected in a number of different things, you know, dirtiness of uh, the uh, less than perfect aspects of family life and things like that. That's just, you know, things may not always seem perfect, but there's still joy there. You can go into and we look at well, it stands on the stands a bit more detail, okay? The reason she seems to think that the family is there are some of the smaller uh, details. So this is again quite um, a central aspect of Bishop's poetry in that she looks at the small details. So she sees the dog asleep, she sees the doilies, she sees the plant, she sees the comic book. She doesn't. She looks at the details and really what's going on. And all of this is giving her uh, some hints that this is not just a business, this is a family home as well. So we'll go into it. Uh, in a bit more detail now. So the first two stanzas. Oh, but it is dirty, this little filling station. Oil soaked, oil permeated, to a disturbing overall black translucency. 
Be careful with that match. Paula wears a dirty, oil-soaked monkey suit that cuts him under the arms and several quick and saucy and greasy sons assist him. It's a family filling station, all quite thoroughly dirty. Okay, so a few questions to think about here. What colour stands out from these stanzas? Why do you think Bishop focuses on this? Why do you think it's, what do you think is in the intended meaning of the last line of stanza 1? And what image are we given of family in the second stanza? Okay, so again, just pause here, read through those two stanzas two or three times, and come to an answer to those three questions. So the image, the color that's going to stand out is this black translucency. Okay, so translucency means you can kind of see it's something you can kind of see through. Okay, um, you, so think of oil really is the only thing you could imagine to really describe that translucency that I can think of anyway. And um, the idea of oil putting black on everything, which you still kind of see through. It, okay, so it's a disturbing oil uh, dirtiness to this world. Right. So, there's a number of reasons why she may focus on this, perhaps there's a sense of mystery, right? but there's also a sense of things not being perfect, things not being, you know, fairy tale, but still existing quite well within the world. The um, last line of that first sound that be careful with that match, this is quite a light-hearted poem. And this is what's going for there. It's a bit of a little joke, you know. Oh look at all the audio, be careful with the match, you know. It's just, it's just a little joke and a bit of a fun poke fun poke at uh, the dirt of the place and the oil everywhere. Uh, there is then what image are we given in the family sex Sansa? We see the family seems to be quite close because the sons are all assisting their father. Now for a bishop this could be quite a poignant image given her family history and the family we know is a topic that theme that is regular in her poetry. So the uh, she's very much focused on the closest family the fact that they're all working together and they seem united. So a few notes along this section. The image of dirt is important throughout the poem. Mr. Tim is shocked or intrigued by the amount of dirt there seems to be. This seems to be a world she's not very familiar with, but she's just intrigued by how people live in this in a different way. A different reading of poem may seem uh the poem the, the dirt may seem the black oil as hiding something or mystery, and the fine line stanza as possibly a hint towards danger. But that's not really supported through the remainder of the poem. The remainder of the poem keeps that lightness. So while it starts off, perhaps we can see you know, we might have a bit of mystery and danger going on. As we move through the poem, we'll see that, that doesn't really work with the poem as a whole. It is going more for this lightheartedness. The first stanza ends with a joke. Uh, this group seems to be happy and feeling playful in the poem. Okay? So this is quite a happy poem. Right? It's not a poem, don't be, you know, Enjoy the try to enjoy and appreciate the, what she's what she's appreciating about life in this poem. Uh, the second stanza seems comfortable and relaxed. The father is typical typical of uh, one with his environment being equally covered in oil. Right? He's you know he exists perfectly within the environment that he lives in, even though she it's so strange to her because it's so dirty and she's trying to understand it. He just seems totally at ease with it. And just at one with the world in which she lives. There is a sense of energy also in the second stanza. Families seem to be enjoying their work, they're comfortable working together, okay? They're quick, okay? And they seem to be, you know, working all at one. Um, there's a sense of closeness through their combined work. The fact that they're working together shows that they, an understanding and a closeness within this family. So moving on then to the next two stanzas. Do they live in the station? It has a cement porch behind the pumps and, it, and on it a set of crushed and grease impregnated wickerwork. On the wicker sofa, a dirty dog quite comfy. Some comic books provide the only note of colour, of certain, of certain colour. They lie upon a big dim doily draping a tabaret, part of the set, inside a big hirsute begonia. Alright, so there's a few uh, terms here you may not be uh, familiar with, so I've just put in some pictures down the bottom. So the tabaret is the table there, a okay, small kind of table. The doily is the cloth covering you see underneath the cup in the second picture. Okay, it's usually very well decorated. And then the begonia is that plant at the end, it's quite a bright, colourful and flowery plant that we see. So again, I'm going to ask you to pause the video here for two to three minutes 
I'm going to look at two questions here. So what features of the station hint that the family lives there? And what impression does Bishop seem to have of this place? Okay, so pause here and we'll choose that. So the features that seem to stand out then to our sister hint that the family lives there is we have the dirty dog who's sleeping there. We have the furniture, so we have the wicker sofa, right? But you know, there are only slight hints. Really, it's the, it's the um, smaller details, the decoration that's gone in. Okay, why would you have a doily, okay, at a filling station? And why would you have a begonia there? And that is, they are home touches, not business touches. So while there may be a wicker sofa at a business, you know, some of the employees or customers sit down. The idea of having the, begonia, the big Hershey begonia or having the um, doily doesn't really fit in. Okay, so that's why she's hinting that may possibly be a family place. This is so much family spends time because of these little touches of comfort. Uh, the impression she seems to have, she seems quite fond of the place. Right? It seems quite quite comfortable. Right? She seems to appreciate the comfort of the place and the. This where and she, she, she's shocked by the dirt of the place, but she still seems to appreciate that the family it's an important place for this family. Okay, so a few notes to go alongside. She initially seems shocked the family might be living in such a dirty place with so much oil around, but this is more of an amazement of the prospect of living in such a place. Um, she's incredulous at an idea so foreign to her own experience, but it's very much a positive image she has. Okay. She's, there's no hint of just of being issues with the family, it's just a different experience. It's a different world than what she's used to and she's appreciating that difference. Uh, the rhetorical question is used to emphasize the poet's near belief. Okay. Do they live here? How could someone live here? Okay. And that leads us into her questioning and how she, see, how she looks for these hints of um, comfort and uh, family life within the filling station. The image and alliteration of Dirty Dog, comfy, okay, the use, and the use of that quite comfy, okay, rather than looking comfortable, the comfy uh, brings back playful tone to the poem, okay. So this is all a poem just about her viewing a different world and being quite amazed by how people live in different ways, but quite happy and, you know, amused by differences in their lives to hers. The playfulness is continued with the addition of colour and the comic books into the scene, okay, so we're bringing that childishness in with the comic books. And suddenly the place seems more like a playground and a place of enjoyment than just a dirty filling station. So she's trying to view this dirty filling station, what she originally seen as just a dirty, uh, covered in oil black uh, filling station. She's now seeing how, trying to view in true perspective what the family that lived there and see the nice touches and things that maybe they focus on more so because they're so probably immune to the dirt around them that you know this day folks more would be more focused on the nice touches that they put into the place. Her observations become more close to details as she knows the details of doily at Havre in the Begonia. These decorative sorry these decorative and non-essential items seem at odds with the oil permeated area and suggest somebody's taking care of the place. Okay? Also for the time we are seeing uh, some other femi uh, feminine touch to the place, you know, with the doily and the big uh, going to her shoe, the, the, sorry, big her shoe begonia, bringing in sense of possibly a mother figure here. And we know that Bishop very much struggled with mother figures and family care from her own personal background. So, finally, moving on to the last two stanzas why the extraneous plant? Why the tabaret? Why or oh, why the doily? Embroidered in daisy stitch with marguerites, I think, and heavy with grey crochet. Somebody embroidered the doily. Somebody waters the plant, or oils it, maybe. Somebody arranges the rows of cans so that they say, softly say, so, 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 the high-strung automobiles. Somebody loves us all. So, how does the fish bring humour into the questions? Right. Uh, what does the arrangement of the cans show for the poet, and what conclusion does she come to at the end of the poem? Okay, so again, we're going to pause here and read through the poem a few more times, or read through the stanza a few more times, and answer those questions. So the first one is the humour. 
okay? And the humor probably comes across most in the line, why or why the doily? Uh, the exaggeration of the question, the repetition, why or why the doily? Uh, the doily is such an inconsequential item. Uh, it's a, you know, a nice item for decoration, it's just uh, not something that you ever really be overly concerned about. Right? So her emphasis of why or why the doily, you know, you can imagine her shouting it out. That's bringing humor in, okay? The idea that she's so uh, enraptured in such a simple, small idea, such a small, um, you could say, object. Um, we also see the humor coming in the final stanza. Somebody orders pat or oils it, maybe. Okay, again, you know, it's not laughing out loud kind of humor, it's just a little bit of wit, a little, you know, funny comment that she's trying to make about the nature of the place. Um, the arrangement of the cans, the so so so, right? So it just shows a bit of organisation in place. You can imagine someone cleaning up around the area and just you know turning cans so they read that. Okay? So it just shows a bit of care um, going into life in the station, a bit of thought and care about it. And it's not just dirt, it's not just things going around the place. It is someone who really wants to make the place as nice as it can be. Uh, the conclusion at the end is probably the most important part of this poem that somebody loves us all. Even in this place that's so foreign to her, this place that uh, seems so strange, a place to live and seems so dirty to her, there's still care and there's still love. And she sees that everyone throughout the world in their own way experiences love from someone, that everyone is loved by somebody. Okay? And also, the fact that you know it is a uh, Hints that this is a feminine figure who's uh, organizing all this, hints that probably the mother suggests that uh, mothers always, the idea of motherly love, that our mothers always love us. Um, that that's important for a bishop because perhaps it's insinuating that she is coming to an acceptance of what happened with her mother. Okay? Or perhaps it's just linking back could be thinking back to her grandmother and to a motherly figure rather than an actual mother, um, which we will we will actually discuss her grandmother in more detail again. Sistine, another poem called Sistina, okay, um, but perhaps you know, it's just a motherly figure rather than an actual mother. It's definitely a complex uh, discussion to be had around those issues. So a few notes along this. Fifth stanza starts with three rhetorical questions. The bishop contemplates what she sees. The exaggerated tone in the third question brings you into mind. What is that? Once again, Bishop uses parentheses or brackets to add more close detail to the image, which is what she's doing throughout. The same as when she said this is the family filling station earlier on. Um, she's just adding a little bit more detail. It shows the closeness of her thought process. In the final stanza, Bishop's answer to questions she has posited earlier in the poem. Uh, she concludes that an unknown caring presence is responsible for small details of place. Somebody has put time and effort into making the place more beautiful and it seems be implied that an absent mother figure is responsible. Okay, so this is very important to making you through her own, the absence of her own mother. And the fact that this is such a happy poem, you know, it's perhaps her uh, saying, saying that she can be happy without even though her mother is somewhat absent. Uh, or strongly absent. And the poem concludes with the idea that somebody loves us all. The use of the term us here in the poem is which includes herself within that statement. Okay, so it's still personal, even though it's a universal statement. Very personal to her, uh, shows personal insight. Okay. And this is very much a very positive poem. You have to look at that, this aspect of it. The poem is very uplifting, very optimistic in its viewpoint. Okay, so overall, the themes we're looking at here are family, very obviously, a theme. love and care are very important. Okay, all these little hints, these little touches that the mother figure is doing to show her love and care. And also, you could comment on the sons assisting their father, obviously, as being an aspect of love and care. And the concept of home, okay, some that these people have a home. The conclusion of the poem and the use of our lust seems upbeat and positive. Bishop is perhaps as accepting that despite her harsh childhood, perhaps her own mother did still love her. Perhaps she's thinking more of the grandmother in Nova Scotia or the aunt who introduced her to poetry. Okay, so, there's all these little figures in her life. Right? There's definitely a feeling positive, positivity there to the poem and that she does feel loved. There's a lot of contrast in imagery when we see the touches of decoration, but still eventually every, but still everything is covered in oil. So we are also seeing here that Bishop is finding beauty in the mundane and, and the less attractive aspects of life. 
we've seen with all earlier in fish, we've seen it in um, some of the prodigal, we're going to see it out of Fisher's poetry that the imagery she uses is very strange, that she finds positivity in imagery that most really won't stereotypically find of beauty. In. The use of parenthesis in the poem uh, to add these elements to mark highlights the incredulity, highlight the sacred to highlight the poet's incredulity must be mentioned. So the fact that she is kind of giving us her own opinions and her own kind of shock about the situation through the use of parenthesis is very important. And the poem is open to interpretation. Perhaps the dirt resembles absent mother um, and fine line sarcastic as the father's sons do not care enough to keep her possessions clean with the dirt. Okay? So perhaps the fact that you know, she's no longer there and the things that she had kept there to make the place look nice on how so oil permeated. Perhaps, you know, there's an insinuation there. But most interpretations of the poem are going to see it in a positive um, light. And that has to do with the hum bringing in of humour throughout the poem. It's very important in supporting that interpretation that this is a positive happy poem. Okay, so finally, task for this poem. Do you think the poet is really being upbeat in the poem, or is she instead disgusted by the level of dirt that permeates the place? Think about all things I said about humour and everything like that, and the imagery, and I have two paragraphs in support of 